Hi, how's your day been like so far? Welcome or welcome back to Health and Medicine. We introduce the greatest and the latest about health and medicine in a fun way, hoping to help you keep healthy and happy. If this is your first time here, and you want to learn the practical, informative health tips and hacks that matter most to you, start now by hitting the subscribe button and notification bell icon to not miss the next update. When you tried to offer a drink or a tasty cake to your families, friends, or co-workers, have you ever heard back no, thank you, I have diabetes. Or there's a time your loved one reached to you and was trying to share. I just diagnosed with diabetes. What did you respond or try to say at these moments? Have you ever worried if you said something wrong? Or want to say something nice to them? Diabetes is complicated. There are a lot of stereotypes and myths floating around about it. Friends, family members, co-workers, or strangers can make comments that can be judgmental, even if they don't mean to be. Remember that your words have a major impact. Choose them carefully. Said in the right way, your support can make a positive difference for someone with diabetes. But saying something that's ill-informed can actually make living with this chronic illness even harder. Let's learn some diabetes etiquette today, you will be more confident about your responses next time. 9 things not to say or not to do to a person with diabetes. 1. Don't say. You don't look like you have diabetes. Please do not assume there is a certain look for diabetes. Being inactive and overweight can raise a person's risk of developing type 2 diabetes. But, many people with type 2 diabetes are not either overweight or obese. Anyone has the chance to get diabetes. Everyone with diabetes needs understanding and support to do all they need to do every day. 2. Don't offer inconsiderate reassurances. Phrases like well it could be much worse. Actually won't make them feel better. That message comes across that diabetes isn't really that big of a deal when in reality it is. 3. Don't say. I didn't know you're diabetic. Calling someone diabetic labels them by their chronic illness, even if it's said in a caring manner. Some find this stigmatizing and even offensive. Rather, say, I didn't know you have diabetes. 4. Don't offer advice about their diet or eating habit. You might think you mean well when you are trying to handle out this advice, but when it's not requested, it's not really that nice as you imagined. Many of the common thoughts about diabetes and eating can be out of date, so you will just seem ignorant or rude. 5. Don't say. Why do you have diabetes? Did you eat too much sugar? Diabetes is not caused by eating too much sugar. Diabetes and its risk factors are complex. Type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune response in a person's body where the body's immune system attacks itself. It's caused by genetics and other triggering factors that have yet to be determined. Right now, there is no way to stop the onset of type 1 diabetes. The onset of type 2 diabetes is caused by genetics, lifestyle and many unknown factors combined. Research has shown that we can prevent or delay type 2 diabetes for some. However, there is no single cause or prevention strategy for all. For more detailed diabetes information, please check this video. 6. Don't appear shocked when they are checking their blood sugar or taking an injection. It's not really something they are looking forward to doing, it's just something they have to do, you know, to stay alive. When they are forced to hide it because people act shocked and disgusted over and over, it only makes doing so much harder. 7. Don't say. My aunt had diabetes and lost her foot. People with diabetes are well aware of complications that can happen with the disease. You don't need to highlight them. Hold off on sharing stories about complications others you know may have experienced. Healthcare teams and diabetes education programs help guide and support each person with diabetes. There have also been many advances in diabetes care that have reduced the rates of complications. For example, in 2016, the US Food and Drug and Administration approved the first artificial pancreas. It can constantly monitor patients' blood sugar levels. It also automatically adjusts the amount of insulin delivered to the body. The device delivers more insulin when a person's sugar level is going up. It delivers less when the sugar is headed down. That makes it a game changer for people with type 1 diabetes and their daily challenges of controlling glucose levels. 8. Don't say. Oh, you have to take insulin. Do you have the bad type of diabetes? Diabetes affects each person differently. Some people with diabetes need to take pills to manage the disease. Others can manage it with diet and exercise alone. Taking insulin injections doesn't mean a person has a more severe form of the disease. It doesn't reflect how well they manage their diabetes either. 
people with type 1 diabetes need to take insulin multiple times each day because their body doesn't produce any insulin. People with type 2 diabetes do produce insulin, but the disease can change over time. That's why their medication needs may vary. Someone with type 2 diabetes might need to start taking insulin to keep their blood sugar in a healthy range. There is no good or bad type of diabetes. Everyone with diabetes has different needs. Their healthcare team helps them choose the best food, activity, and medication for them. 9. Don't say. I'd rather die than have to poke myself every day for the rest of my life. Really not helping here. The reality for someone with diabetes is there's going to be some pokes and prods. Even if they have an insulin pump or continuous glucose monitor, there will still be some lancets and needles involved. It isn't easy, but I'm positive people with diabetes think living with some pokes is much better than the alternative. 5 things to say or to do instead. 1. Do show you care. Telling someone you care about is good, but showing that concern is more powerful. Show you care with a hug or encouraging note, by really listening to the person's concerns, by learning about diabetes, and by doing things together that you both enjoy. 2. You can say. I don't know much about diabetes. Could you tell me some of what you know? This is a great place to start. Also, do take the time to educate yourself about diabetes. That way you can help to educate others that may make the above comments when you are with your friend or family member. Make sure to check these videos which contains what you need to know about diabetes. You can also find a link in the description box below. 3. Do appreciate the hard work and dedication that people with diabetes have to put in each and every day just to stay alive. People with type 1 or type 2 diabetes must work at managing it around the clock, watching how much they eat, monitoring blood sugar, taking medications, getting regular exercise, and not getting too stressed. It's a 24-7 disease that they cannot take a break from, and having someone that appreciates all they do can really help. 4. You can say. You are a strong and capable person. I'm glad you are my friend. Consider offering to be a diabetes buddy. A big part of managing diabetes is making healthy lifestyle choices. Offer to join your friend or relative for a walk or a game of tennis. Suggest going to a restaurant that offers a good selection of healthy and tasty meals. Remember that when you make these same healthy lifestyle choices, you benefit too. 5. Do ask how you can help. Don't try to be a mind reader. Don't assume you know. Instead, ask for specifics that are really meaningful and then do them. You can suggest ideas I could take you to your doctor's appointment or I can cook a healthy dinner for instance. But check first to be sure that's what the person wants. What's your experience when encounter someone is with diabetes? Do you have other diabetes etiquettes that you would like to share? Welcome to comment below. We like to hear from you. If you found this video helpful, please like and share it with others who may find it helpful too. Your ongoing support has helped us make health and medicine more accessible to everyone. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in our next video.